I'm Rob Vendrasco from Cosmo Music. We've got Rick Hines from Fender Musical Instruments, a product development manager. And Rick, you have something new to show us here today. Yeah, I'm super excited. I came all the way from uh, Phoenix, Arizona to uh, share with you the new Tone Master Pro. <laughs> Super, super excited about this. This is the culmination of many years with the Tone Master amps, but also planning on doing something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and we took this time in order to make sure that we did it right when it came out. So um, it's just been a very interesting, exciting process to go from starting with the Tone Master amps, the Deluxe, the Princeton, the Super, and being able to use that technology. Um, to extend the line, but but beyond just the amps into multi-effects unit mm -hmm. that players, um, I think, will get uh, a lot of um, enjoyment and, and a lot of excitement playing through it. There's also, this is new as well, right? These... Yes, so these are the Tone Master FR12 uh, cabinets. We also will have a, a FR10 cabinets, mm -hmm. um, which is a great way if you're playing live um, they are, you know, they're powered FR speakers that have tone controls, which makes it really easy. If you're playing live and let's say that the room is a little dark, you need to brighten it up rather mm -hmm. than touching the settings on the Tone Master Pro, you can do it with the treble, middle, and bass, and there's a cut a knob as well. And volume too, so you just get the right sound at the right volume. Once you have them set, you can just use your master here to dial in the amount of volume that you need for the venue and you're good to go. Awesome. Uh, so looking at the unit, uh, I think the footprint is nice. It's a nice size. I'm, I have a gig tonight and I need three sounds. Could, mm -hmm. you, could you dial up three sounds for me? I, I need a nice clean sound, I need a nice crunch sound, and I need a nice lead sound. What's your favorite kind of clean tone? One of my favorite amps, I've got a Blues Deluxe mm -hmm. at home. Like it's a fabulous clean tone, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's would be favorites. the benchmark for, for clean. Well, how about let's say, uh, let's do something like a Deluxe Reverb. Okay, yeah, perfect. Know, which is kind of where the Fender clean, zone, clean mm -hmm. tone starts with. Yep. So you'll see there are pluses here, and there are also pluses down here at a block. So now we have the block. Now I can select through all the different amplifiers here. So we said Deluxe Reverb. Now I'm gonna pick it with the Reverb because this does have the Convolution Reverb that we did in the Tone Master mm -hmm. Deluxe Reverb, which is really nice sounding. All right, so now we've got the amplifier. Let's say I want a little bit more treble, maybe roll back the bass a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of reverb personally, that's yep. me. So we can get a... Uh, what else do you like with it? Do you maybe like a little bit of compression okay. and chorus and, and maybe just, yeah, slight delay in the background too. All right, so on the left hand side here, you've got all, you saw the amps, yep. you see half stacks, heads. Now we're gonna go into effects and now they are branched out into other groupings as well. So let's, let's start with the compressor. We'll pick this. You can also demo them. Okay. Um, you mentioned about chorus, you said? Chorus, yeah. Okay, that's a nice one. That's come yeah. back around, right, since the <laughs> 80s. Uh, we'll go into modulation, and we'll try the 3D. Well, 
the effect I use for the chorus doesn't have the, um, the face plate. So let me go back if we can just... All right, so now we're, we're selecting a chorus that you might be very familiar with. That's kind of the, the traditional chorus. Yeah. And when you choose that, then all, all, the, all its controls uh, spill over to the... Exactly. Yeah, so you can, you can, once again, you can touch the screen or you can actually just do it from here. So I can fine tune anything right there. We can slow down the chorus. Like that. I can scroll this way. There's my compressor. Everything spilled out again. Add some gain to it. So when you slid over to the compressor, then all the all the controls changed along with it, right? Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Scroll again. Now we're to the amplifier. So we'll back out. So now we've got our compressor. We've got our uh, chorus. A little delay. Let's get a little right. delay in there. All yeah. right. So you can put the delays in front or behind the amplifier, just depending on on your taste. Um, I tend to like them at the back here. After, yeah. Yeah. So we'll go to this memory delay. And now we'll go into this. Oh, look at that. So there you go. That sounds fantastic. That's a, an amazing clean sound to start. So. so that's a lot of fun. So let's just say I want to save it. I can hit the save here. I can select the name. Once I do this, I can clear it out. And then start with a new name. And we'll just call this one clean, clean. for now. Yeah. Let's see if I can do it this way. I'm actually left-handed. So, and it will save it. Boom, now you notice that that turned from red to blue, and that's your, that's your clean tone, not saved this way. So we'll, we'll start there, we'll back out to our list here of my presets, and we'll go to the next one, and now you said probably a crunch or I something? I need a crunch, yeah. Okay, so something with we maybe like a... play a lot like of a... Kiss songs in, oh, in the Oh, okay, that's wow, why, so all right. We need good crunch. All right, so if you were saying Kiss, then I might select <laughs> under the half stacks, uh, called the, uh, maybe the British 800. Excellent choice. So once again, I can click on it. Everything spills out. I can adjust the, the amount of gain, the presence. I can choose a different microphone if I want. Let's say I want a little bit fuller sounding. So there's a good start. Sounds really good. If you want possibly a little boost, you could do that. So we'll pick an effect. So the green, yes. green box. The green box. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everyone knows that I like Everyone, the green box. I heard, uh, I heard uh, yeah. someone told me that. <laughs> so now we've got that. So now that's adding a little bit of gain, a little bit of boost. It's tightening the low end a little bit, so. <laughs> Also, at any time, you can bypass it here, you can bypass it there, just to kind of hear what it's doing to the sound. So we'll leave that there. All right, so what else do you like to add? A little delay for this too? I think a little delay, like maybe a little, like a slight slap back, not, nothing, too, nothing too heavy, but just to kind of thicken it a mm -hmm. bit, okay. I think. We're gonna use the plus here. I'm gonna to go to effects, delay, and then just a just a good digital delay. We'll keep the the uh, feedback low time. Went a little faster than that. So you get just a little of that. That's nice, yeah, just a little tail there. Just to yeah. thicken it up.
Why don't you go through uh, some of its features here? I, I see a nice big touch screen, maybe. Yeah, there's. Touch on the touch screen here. Yeah, it's got a seven inch touch screen, which makes it obviously very easy for guitarists. Um, we really thought going into this, one of the biggest problems I've always had just dealing with other multi effects units is that um, they can be a bit daunting if you're not highly, you know, a high tech person. Um, even just getting started, a lot of times you need to read the manual as to what to do. Right. As players, we felt it was imperative that we make something that is extremely intuitive, easy to use, and that guitarists can, can truly understand it in, in a very quick way so they can get to playing and being creative. So with the 7-inch touchscreen, uh, everything that you're doing uh, within your presets is there. It's easily accessible. Uh, once you touch the screen, if you touch the amplifier, it goes right to the amplifier, it scrolls up. You can actually touch the screen to change the, the knobs as far as what they do. You can scroll across to any of the effects. You can add effects. You can change your effects paths to be parallel. <laughs> You can do it all from there, but then you also have the 10 different encoders, and those you can actually fine tune. So depending on your work path, as far as uh, your, your, excuse me, your workflow, what you want to do, there's a few different ways that you can get to it. So whatever feels more easy to use for you uh, mm -hmm. makes it a quicker way to, to just getting good sounds without having to, to twiddle the knobs forever, which can be very, very um, frustrating. So these buttons are encoders as well, so they, they're dials, is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, correct, yeah? correct. So if I were to touch the amplifier, as I said, oh wow, yeah, yeah that I looks can really actually cool. scroll from here, or they all spill out onto here, so you'll see all the different knobs. So anything I do here, it's turning the switch, bright switch on and off, yep. volume is right there. When you go into the cabinet, which is right above here to the right, and change the mic or the yes. So that's the other thing that we've done too is we've picked um, pretty much you know the the highlight of of microphones that guitarists use right. and created IRs for every cabinet uh, depending on if you want the cap, the cap edge, the cone, the cone edge, and also the distance from right at the grill cloth all the way to six inches away. And there's a lot of variation even just within that. The amplifier can sound very different just moving the microphone or picking a different microphone. Exactly, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you've got that, you can click on here, there's your selection. I, I can move it around like this, I can do it from here. Oh, okay. You have a high cut and a low cut, so if you've got a little bit too much low end information, you can notch that out. Um, you have on axis and on axis, off axis for the mm -hmm. microphone. And then you can also, change what cabinet you want. So you don't have to stick with the, the one that came with it. We could pick this one. Now we've got flesh and blue speakers, mm -hmm. um, and then you can use those, and then you can change your microphone. Let's say you want a ribbon microphone. So I mean, the amount of, uh, the variables of how many amps or how many different tones you can get per preset is kind of uh, endless, I guess. You've got this here where you've got your personal presets where you yep. can save everything, mm -hmm. we'll go there. You also have the ability for your favorite presets, which I've done just to pick some of my favorites to play today. Yep. You have what come with it, which are the Fender presets, and those are ones that come in with every model that you can use and modify to your own taste. There are also ones that are cloud-based. You'll be able to connect to the cloud to see what other people, other artists have mm -hmm. and download this directly to it. You also have, you're talking about playing a show, you have a songs and set list mode. So you can pick for each song the presets that you're going to use, and then you can create a set list with all those songs. So for every song, if you have three different, let's say the song you're playing has three different presets, 
Right. You, you select those three and you have them spill out to the encoders so you can hit them at the right time. Uh -huh. Then all those songs can be collected in the set list section. And now for your set, you, anything that you're going through, you can scale through and get those presets and you're good to go. So for people that play cover or originals, it's really easy to kind of collect your, your set lists and then play out. Right. But mm. let's go back to what you were saying yeah. here. We'll go back to just my presets. I'm gonna find some empty spots over here. Just start right there. So let's just say, okay, so now it's empty. So we're gonna go into the preset. You know, just something to keep in mind, this has over a hundred uh, effects and amp models. Um, the thing that's amazing about this is that we're not gonna stop with the launch. We're gonna have new effects and new amp models every six months. So we're gonna grow that selection of the amplifiers that are involved um, with the Tone Master Pro. It's also worth noting that uh, we actually have EVH branded within the Tone Master Pro as well. We mm -hmm. got the, uh, the sign off from their team. Um, they were very critical. They wanted to make sure it sounded amazing. So we sat down and played the back-to-back -back with the tube amplifier and got the blessing on it. And now they're, we're the only company that can have EVH branded amplifiers mm -hmm. you know, in, in, the, in our Tone Master Pro, which is really great. Right, so you were asking about a, let's see, I'm trying to think if I have one in here. I mean, this is always like the EVH we're saying. <laughs> Probably don't want to record that. That's a cover. Um, I want to keep that solo. You know, like we said, other they're not just Fender amps in here. There's British flavors, obviously, like this one. Um, so you can really get just about any tone that you can imagine. It's also important to know for a lot of players if they love their favorite pedal, let's say it's a fuzz, or something that's very sensitive to um, the impedance of the guitar, this has four uh, loops on the back. The first two are analog, so it won't mess with your tone. You know, you won't have any problems dealing with fuzzes or overdrives if, yep. if that's something that you want to add along with this. And then the other two are perfect for delays or things like that, time-based things. So mm -hmm. that makes it flexible for live. Uh, it's stereo, so the XLR outs. Um, it is USB, so you can connect, um, update uh, anytime there's new software that way. It's very easy to update. And then we mentioned there's an app that goes along with it, so when you connect to it, you can upload your presets for other people. You can download presets from those people. You'll be able to get artist presets that we're gonna be doing through the whole process of this. There's so much, mm -hmm. there's so much. I know I'm gonna forget a couple of things along no. the way here, but I just, I just know that it's like, if you love tone, but you love the flexibility of being able to, to do all kinds of stuff for recording or live, this is really the ultimate solution. Um, it also does have a tap tempo for delays, and then switching over, press and hold, now it becomes a 60 second looper that has half speed, it has reverse, like all my favorite features, so if I'm doing loops, get some great tones, and then loop them and record and play over them. Uh, you can bank up this way, so all your presets come down below here, you can set it up so anything that's been saved here, oh, I should mention foot switch assignment. Going into oh, that, I can select this one, confirm it. It's green, so I'm gonna pick green. And now it's in there, so now, now the effect is on. So yeah, when we call up that patch, I can toggle that on and off. Yes, so once it's off, it's not highlighted. Now that it's on, it's highlighted. I can do the same with this one. Back up 
here. So foot switch assignment. Same thing with the delay. You can also do parameter changes as well. And now that's on there too. So you just assign the empty buttons to like uh, pr parameters? Uh, Correct. You can assign as many parameters as you can and choose on here, you can select. You can also do multiple ones, so you could actually have it set up so that when you hit one of these, if you have two amplifiers in your preset, which you can do, you hit that button and it'll switch from your clean to dirty in the same preset if you want to. It also has momentary, so if you have a flanger that you only want to be turned on when you press it down, you press it down okay. and momentary, yeah. you mm -hmm. lift up and then it turns off. You have the ability for an expression pedal, so if you wanted to have something set up for wah-wah or pitch, and then a toe switch, so if you've got something that has a nice click in so it feels like a wah-wah, you mm -hmm. have that ability too. The opportunities to create good tones are kind of endless here. So you've got your I.O., Bluetooth, the ability to set up. You also have a basic EQ here as well, or I'm sorry, a mixer with, you can set up the mixer, you can also set up a basic EQ so that you can set up if you need overall the settings to be, you know, um, high pass or low pass, just depending on the situation. But uh, because of the IRs, you can plug this in directly to your DAW and record great tones. You can also reamp if you want to as well. You mm -hmm. have the ability to do that as well. So you can play along and then not have, um, when you use the USB cable, you can have it set so one is recording the preset sounds and the other one is dry, and then you can change the sound if you want to later at some point. Can we talk about the CPU in this? Like how much, like if you're gonna use like a big atmospheric reverb and stuff, like it, does it hog all the power of the unit? So this is a great thing about it. You, you segue perfectly into what I was gonna talk about because I know a lot of them like quad core, that's their big, you know, four cores. This has eight. So the traditional uh, Tone Master Deluxe uh, have four and two of those were used just for the convolution reverb. This has eight, so you really can load this up with different sounds, different effects, different amplifiers yeah. um, in, in different ways that you might not even you know, know is, is gonna, how it's gonna sound, but you have the flexibility to do that, to try different things because it has that much processing power. So um, something I did mention about this, let me go back into Crunch. Um, one thing you can do if you go to instrument here you also have different signal paths. So if I wanted to do something like this, now I can put, I could actually put the delay on one side and the overdrive on another side. I could pan them hard left and right. Oh, sorry, this, these are the volumes. Hard left and hard right. And now you could have, delay would come out of one side and then the other side would be overdriven mm -hmm. after the amp. So as we're mentioning about the different amps and splitting the signal, I've got one set up here. Let's go into it. And you'll see that you've got one amplifier that is on one side that's got a bit of delay, and then you've got a different amplifier with tremolo on this side. And so now, let's make sure that they are. So we're gonna pan them hard left and hard right, and you'll really hear what's going on. That sounds incredible. It sounded incredible, absolutely. Yeah, we think, uh, I mean, if you're really into effects and really taking it out there, you can do that. But if you're someone that likes just great tones, doesn't want a lot of extra stuff on there, it's gonna sound really good as well. Yeah, usually when I do a sound check, I, I get all my effects on at one time and drive everyone crazy. But, you know, that, that, that's, that's awesome that, uh, like, you're not limited. Like, you can, if, if you have uh, delays that do use a lot of power, a lot of, Mm -hmm. Processing power, like it's not, it's not going to cack out. No, like I said, uh, one of the most uh, taxing on the CPU is actually the the reverb from the Fender amps because it's so difficult to mm -hmm. do the convolution spring reverb. Uh, but outside of that, like, there's just there's a lot of flexibility and there's just a lot of CPU power to really, 
you know, I think people are going to be playing this and creating presets and sounds that we haven't heard before and taking it in, in very different directions. Rick, tell me, what, what do you like about this unit? What's, what's your favorite uh, feature in this unit? Well, okay, that's... Okay, say top three. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, what I would top say five. is I, I love the way that we've captured the tones. We use the Tone Master process. We were very diligent about making sure that the amps sounded correctly. And when they didn't, we went back to the drawing board and kept working on it until you could hear them side by side, mic the same way, and go, I don't... I don't hear a difference, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is, a, there is one thing about being in front of a, 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 an amplifier with an open back that, that is, is slightly different, but if you mic that amplifier and you compare it against, I mean, it, they're very, very, very close. And I think, for me, it's about inspiration. It's like, if a piece of gear makes me want to play and, and a half an hour, an hour's gone by mm -hmm. and I don't realize it, I know it's it's inspiring versus what I call like the five minute test. Like sometimes I'll try a piece of gear and it's like within five minutes, I'm like, I'm good. This takes me in places and gets me excited to play and I get lost in it. And I think for me, not unlike when I record uh, songs or something like that, having something that is easy to use gets you to being creative quicker. And that mm -hmm. means it's not about setup because you can lose the inspiration. And I think that's what this does really well. Tonally, and then creating sounds that I've never done before, or heard before, in ways that I didn't expect. I think those are the things that, that make me excited. But the thing about Fender is like, we're all just guitar nerds. Like, that's what mm -hmm. our team does. We love tube amps, we love digital. We try to infuse the, the love and, and the heart from what we do on the tube side into our digital products. And um, I think players notice that, and it's and it's shown in, in the success of the Tone Master amps. And I think this is going to be really exciting for a lot of, of players. Mm -hmm. What I like is how intuitive it is, just how, how it's laid out, like just how easily easy you were able to dial up a clean tone for me, a, a crunch tone. The layout's beautiful. Uh, I love the size. I, I, like I mentioned earlier, I, I think the footprint is fantastic. And what you can't see on camera is this red jewel pilot light. Yeah. on the back yeah which is so cool honestly yeah and oh to to our history and we thought it was just kind of essential because it's like when people think of fender amps it's that jewel and yeah. so it's like even on stage even if you don't see what someone's playing you see that you know right away what it's going to be once you know what mm -hmm. the tone masters are the touch screen that is a thing for me i am not i wouldn't say that i'm a luddite but i'm definitely not someone that is like hyper technical so having something where it's like I can see it, it's skeuomorphic, I can move things around, I understand how it works in the real world, so my brain helps me understand how it's going to interact. It's mm -hmm. not a, a, an abstract. I feel like with some other products, they're like abstract. I don't know what this is. I see a squiggly line and I'm not sure. It's like this, I know. It's like I know what that amp is, I know what that pedal yep. is. <laughs> That's some nice playing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You what speakers are in here? What, what? They are a speaker designed by the the, um, the OEM that that creates this. So it's just it's a it's like a Fender branded speaker. 
that's that's made overseas. A little more full range though. It I is think. full range, yes. And it has, yeah. there's a tweeter there too. So it's like with Bluetooth and things like that, you still capture enough of the top end. So when you're playing along with stuff, you don't lose that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for having me here, Rob. If you're liking what you hear, check out the new Tone Master Pro at Cosmo Music. What Rick said. <laughs>